out of Kwakwani, Linden area. All those things then will create energy today. That Amalia Falls project, by the time they finish the road two years from now, starts a project two years later, it's a 10 year to bring the transmission lines to where we need the, the facilities. So we can wait 10 years with blackouts we're having right now. We've got to got energy to create productions, manufacturing, and it's about jobs. It's jobs and jobs is what the ordinary person is looking for. And I told the, the, the president in, in, a, in a message that says, look at the LCDS. Yes, he's getting glorified and getting pats on the back. But Norway is the richest country in the world, at least one of the richest countries. They have almost zero unemployment. They are one of the biggest shipbuilders in the world. Why not tell Norway, why don't you come into Guyana and build a shipyard, teach us how to build ships, build some of your ships here, give us 10,000 jobs, keep your $30 million, put it here, and, and we will be happy. We won't cut our trees down. But don't keep us poor. No sell our country out to cheap, for cheap, Mr. Jagio. You're taking our country down. You're selling it out for cheap. The, the Amerindians don't want just solar panels. They want to learn how to fish better. They want to be able to get, get that fish and export it. Those are the industries we need to create. We're selling our country out for cheap. So what are your other policies you uh, will introduce us to ensure the country really move forward? There's a school of thought uh, quite prevalent too. And Guyana has remained static for the last 50 years. Do you agree with that? It, it, I mean, yes. I mean, uh, your life has not gotten better. Yes, infrastructure, yes, we've got a better roads, which is, you know, loans and, and other things that come. We've, we've, we have seen some, some the, the, uh, the underground economies are doing very well. Big buildings are going up, hotels and you know, there's no tracking record of where those assets and, and, and financing are coming from. So people measure that, that Guyana has done better. But uh, the example I give, you know, I went to a, a store in Regent Street uh, the other day, and I, I saw this girl I saw 10 years ago working at a, a wooden building on Regent Street. She was making 28000 living in Perica. And now that same building is, um, you know, three-story high concrete, and the poor girl is still making 28000 so her life has not gotten better. But so the building has gone up. The so-called economy is getting better. And I asked the business owner, says, why? He says, well, I got to pay all this back. And I have to do all these things. And I have, you know, but the end of the day, the government is taking 60% out of our pocket, plus all the taxes I talked about. That's a burden on the poor man that we cannot sustain. We got to go from a 40,000 job to 80,000 to 120. And unless we have economic radical transformation, I can't see the president saying buildings are going up. Look at the economy. Ask my uh, family in Lillian Dahl and in Unity. They have, lives haven't gotten better, but so-called uh, we're doing good. So our policies is very simple. Let's put the basic things in place first. This is our own Guyanese dream. You ask anybody what our Guyanese dream is. It's to own our own house have a decent uh, income for our families, get our children to school safely. I mean, even if the government take our VAT money, Mr. Posada, and, and buy some school buses and protect our children on that road, I would feel, well, you know what, maybe I'll pay the 16%, but I'm not even seeing my children being protected to go into school. So we're not saying let's go and do all these giant things for Guyana and turn the country into the richest country in the world. I'm saying let's get back to the basics. Let's take care of our people and incrementally and radically change the, tra the economic policy, finish the road to Brazil, build the deep water harbor, uh, tell Norway what, what to do if they don't want her to cut, us to cut our trees down, and that's gonna bring back power in our pockets that is gonna ultimately take care of our children's future. Well, yes, you've said a lot there, but the big um, question, development takes time, Development also needs three factors. Security, that's vital. Safety of the individual mm -hmm. and his family. And the third most important is confidence in the country, where it's going, what's happening within, and as people see it, this is the local people here. And even somebody uh, 
overseas Guyanese who would love to come back to Guyana, but they want to see the security, yes, the healthcare, security. better healthcare systems. And I, I think India proved it well over the years. The, you know, the, the non-resident Guyanese, as I call them, they're still connected to our country. I mean, instead of going from New York and buying a house in Florida for two hundred thousand dollars, if we can open up Hog Island and create a healthcare system and airport where they feel safe and secure, they'll come and buy their retirement house in Guyana. But yes, we have to provide the security. And there is a million Guyanese living outside of, of our country right now. We need to connect all of them back to us. And those are the basic things they're asking for. So if we can do that, then how do we uh, uh, ensure security? I mean, when you pay a policeman 28000 when you have them live in those uh, terrible dorms, you're going to attract the worst of the worst that just need a, a, a little better life that knows that they can maybe be corrupt out there. You're not going to attract the people that says, let's, let's have that pride. You know, wear my Guyana flag on my, my collar all the time. Is We've got to institute that pride back in our country. And it, it, it's, it's the infrastructure. So darn it, use our taxpayers' money better. Don't build fancy houses. Don't, don't you know, make all these thousands of trips across the country. Stay home get the job done let us see a better life and i i would say i believe in a government of national unity and i think there's great ppp people they're great pnc people i think the older politicians i shouldn't say older the entrenched politicians that have been in parliament for 20 30 years they need to go it's time they have not done what they should do for a country it's time they go and let's put new leadership let's put a, a united leadership in place that that can work together and that's why our campaign slogan is together we will how do we guarantee that these new people you're talking about to come into parliament won't pursue the same policy as the old ones that were there looking after themselves you opened the program this tonight with the constitutional change yes. by putting those constitution change in place the corruption the fight the parliamentary review the accountability, the transparency, the freedom of information, all those things will make a difference. You go to jail. If you're corrupt, you go to jail. Same thing as, as a speeding minibus driver. You don't just put them in jail, you put the owner in jail because the fact is, is the owner telling those spe speeding minibus drivers to do 10 trips a day when it should be only doing five trips. And, and so it's a lot of structural things we've got to change, but the fact is accountability, and transparency is going to be very important in any new government and I think because the executive powers are there we don't have the ability to, to monitor and audit the government then money have disappeared the Auditor General has proven and he's a brave man to uh, and a brave organization to keep exposing and I think the ordinary person yes who is is really realizing that today when they drive by and see the big houses or they see the multiple cars ministers have, they have forgotten what it's like to be poor. Those same people were poor five years ago, 10 years ago. I mean, I, I, I will name names. Mr. Robert Prasad wasn't a wealthy man. He was an ordinary man out of unity. I mean, I families from unity. Um, now to build Oh, and a minister makes what four hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars a a month salary. You can build multi million dollar house with that kind of money. So where is it coming from? It's coming from our taxpayers' money. It's coming from the LCDS money that we're selling our countries out for cheap. And I think that's a sad part as you look into mothers' eyes and they can't afford a uniform for their school children, or there's no school books, and they, they're told to go copy the school book, they gotta pay for that copying. And that's the sad part. It, it brings tears to their eyes, it brings tears to my eyes, is that we've got to change the system for the better. But we've gotta be bold. We've gotta have the courage, and that, that, that's not gonna happen overnight. I don't expect a thousand people to stand next to me on the street corner, but I hope they let me in their house they let me talk to their children, let me talk to them about how to be successful, how to create the opportunities in life. But working together, I think we'll be able to do it. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a change. It's a transformation even in our thinking do in our country. Do you think our educational system is up to the standard required in the world at large? 
Uh, I have a friend that is a, 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 a grade 3.